This video is sponsored by Inio, who has hooked me up with Keyshot 9 to bring great tutorials to you. Hey, I'm Sam and I do design and in the video today, I'm going to talk about my lighting setup for interior scenes like this. So while we're waiting for the scene to res up, I also have a video out at the moment talking about the Georgian panelling you can see in the background there, which was made entirely with uh, displacement maps that I'd made in Adobe Illustrator and brought into Keyshot. So that is actually a single flat plane with a displacement map on. That is what is making that floral pattern and the rectangular panelling that you can see on there as well. So go and head over to that video if you want to find out how to do that. But in this video, I want to talk about the environment that I've got set up because I've had a few questions about it on Instagram when I posted this picture. Uh, so we're going to go into performance mode so we can zoom around the scene as much as we can without it worrying about uh, resing up on us. And I'm just going to zoom out, turn off depth of field, and we're going to take a look at my HDRI. Um, and as you can see, it is as simple as one pin in the scene itself okay so we have a fairly light area uh, for the background and one pin is all it needs to uh, make the scene look realistic because i wanted a sort of diffused light coming in through a window so other ways that i've helped with the scene is that i have it in an enclosed space okay granted this whole area is open here because i wanted to show a full size window and have as much light in as possible. But I am telling Keyshot to bounce that light around inside the room as much as possible by having everything closed off and everything is modeled in one to one scale and in Keyshot in one to one scale. And that is going to tell the algorithms and all the science that goes on behind Keyshot scenes um, to bounce the light around in a realistic way. So, all I did for the environment is if we come over to the environment tab, is literally um, it's as simple as this. I almost feel embarrassed to make a video about it, but this is all it is. Uh, I can show the background color here um, is this sort of gray color. It's 21% gray. That could be 100% gray if you wanted some more light around as well. But I wanted a, a little bit of a shallow contrast at the top of the room. If I go back, I can show you exactly where I mean. Let's just change all this around. So up in this section here, I did want some darker spaces. And if I had that at 100% white as the background, so if I change that to 100% white, for example, uh, I'm going to lose a lot of that uh, once it reses up finally. Um, so yeah, that's all it is. It's a soft uh, round pin that is 20 uh, in radius and 90 in brightness. And that is the only thing that I've used in this scene. Uh, so th that's it. That's all I wanted to show you guys that you don't need a crazy HDRI setup to get a really nice natural looking scene. Uh, what I can show you real quick is if I wanted to make this a harsh shadow, as in having harsh shadows on the floor, I'm gonna turn that down to two. And let's just increase this by a whole bunch, maybe even increase it a little bit more. And you can see already that I'm gonna get some harsher shadows, harsher shadows on the floor down here and across the painting here as well, because the light is coming from a smaller area in the sky, which is gonna simulate having a really bright sunlight instead of a diffused overcast day. Uh, but that just depended on what I wanted to have in the scene. I wanted to go for a nice, soft, diffused light coming in. Uh, so by changing that between a small radius with a large brightness or a large radius with a low brightness, you can start to change how the light will affect inside and change if it's an overcast day, a cloudy day, a rainy day, or a sunny day like it is now. Something else that I sometimes do as well is just to change the color a little bit. So I'm going to use the Kelvin scale because that is what is used uh, by nature. Uh, they don't use RGB. Uh, Mother Nature doesn't use RGB. They use Kelvin. And I can just pick a neutral color there. Um, but what I tend to find is after that, I tend to need to color correct anyway in something like Lightroom. And you'll find a lot of pictures online for interior rendering and interior photos that they've already been color corrected. 
So sometimes I don't go for the neutral colors, or if I do, I go for something a little bit warmer in the sky, a little bit colder in the sky, sorry, to simulate the blue sky, and maybe something a little bit warmer in the sun. And what that's going to generate is a warm tone wherever the sun is hitting, and a cooler tone wherever the sun is not hitting. Now you want to be as subtle as you can with this, because if you go too much, then it's going to start to look, you know, that's definitely not, something that would ever happen if it's something that's that blue. Uh, so you're going to want to be quite subtle with the way you do that. But in my original setup, all of that was just gray and values of, of gray and white, uh, because you find out that a lot of things have been color corrected after the fact anyway in, in Lightroom. So uh, that's just something that I do already in Keyshot with just using the white tones. Uh, it depends on what type of feeling I'm, I'm in to, to have the colored hues or the white tones. So essentially, that's my whole setup. It's going to be a really fast video. That's everything done and dusted. Don't forget to check out my other video on how to make this Georgian panel texturing with uh, displacement maps in Illustrator and Keyshot. And if you learned anything in this video, don't forget to comment down below because I love hearing about that as well. And don't forget to like and comment and subscribe and hit the bell button and everything else that YouTube asks you to do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.